Hey friends, Ash here with GenSense. Hope that you're doing really well. Today I'm going to be talking to you guys about everybody's favorite niche house. No, not Creed. Not Roger Parfum. Not Guerlain. Not Maison Francis Kirkshawn. No. Shut up. Parfum's tomorrow, Lee. That's who. So yeah, today I'm going to be talking to you guys about my personal top five favorites from Parfums to Marley. And they will be in order from fifth to first, with first being my absolute favorite. So let's jump into it. Let's talk about a little PDM. And guys, today's video is sponsored by FragranceUSA.com. I have a link in the description to their website. They're a great discounter of niche and designer fragrances. And if you use the code PDM25, PDM25, you'll save yourself 25% off any Parfums de Marly fragrance on the website. So if you're wanting to pick up any Parfums de Marly's, whether it's one that I talk about in this video or a different one, Go ahead and check the website out, fragranceusa.com, PDM25. Save yourself a little money. Parfums de Marly, there's a little bit of a divide or a really big divide actually between people that like their cool weather fragrances, their fall, their winter fragrances that are really rich and sweet and dense. And then other people like those summertime scents, the ones that are, you know, fresh. And uplifting. And as we work through this list, you'll definitely be able to tell which side I fall on in that argument. Let's kick things off with this one, Pegasus Exclusif. This one is my newest Parfums de Marly as of this video. This one has vanilla, guyac wood, almond, and oud as some of the notes in the fragrance, along with a little bit of heliotrope as well. And this one is a flanker to, of course, Pegasus. And what they did in the simplest of terms is they took Pegasus and then they took the base from Leighton Exclusif and they smashed them together, kind of Frankenstein's monster style. And then you got Pegasus Exclusif. And actually, it's better than Pegasus. So even though that sounds like a really weird way to go about making a fragrance, it works. The original Pegasus actually has some similarities, pretty strong similarities to Dior's Hypnotic Poison, believe it or not. Kind of weird that it smells similar to a lady's fragrance that comes in a poisoned apple, but it does. So Pegasus Exclusif is going to be number five as of right now. It actually made my top 10 fall niche fragrances for this year, 2021. Really good stuff, but it just can't quite compete with the next ones in this list. Number four is Wajon. I feel like I've never really been able to pronounce that quite exactly how it's supposed to be said. This one has cinnamon, tonka, honey, and vanilla as some of the notes in the fragrance. And that really gives you a great idea of how this smells just from those notes. This one is sweet. It's almost sticky sweet. It's very rich, slightly dark and spicy. This one shares some similarities with Ombre Nargi from Hermes and Angel Share from By Killian. Both of those scents are in the same style, the same family as this one. So once again, we've got another cool weather fragrance here. Great for the holiday season. It's a big compliment puller and uh, has great performance as well. It was actually one of the very first Parfums de Marly fragrances that I picked up and still to this day, I think it's one of the best. And honestly, the similarity with those two fragrances doesn't hurt a bit because both of those are absolute stunners. Killers. Here we go. Number three, Herod. Tobacco, vanilla, cinnamon, incense, and even a little bit of osmanthus. Some of the notes in this fragrance. You don't see that one too often. Osmanthus. So this one has a little bit of a similarity with Pulse of the Night from Isi Miyake. Now, I'll tell you guys, I, I don't think personally that it's that close to Pulse of the Night, but it doesn't bother me because I love that fragrance too. So with this, you're gonna get a great tobacco leaf and vanilla. And initially when people saw that, you know, tobacco and vanilla, they were really quick to draw a comparison between tobacco vanille from Tom Ford 
and this one, but really there are quite a few differences between the two. This one is not quite as sweet as Tobacco Bunny. You've got that, that smoke from the incense. You've got this little floral aspect working in with it as well. They're quite different. Tobacco Bunny is more centered around that very sweet tobacco with fruity nuances, whereas here you've got the spice, the incense, et cetera, et cetera. Although I will say that because when that initially came out and it was compared to Tobacco Bunny, in my own mind, to an extent, Herod and Godolphin from Parfums de Marley are linked the same way that Tuscan Leather and Tobacco Vini for Tom Ford are linked because Godolphin from Parfums de Marley does definitely share similarities with Tuscan Leather. So in a weird kind of way, even though it doesn't smell like Tobacco Vini, it still is linked to that fragrance in my mind. And I will say about Godolphin, I'm gonna hit you with the spoiler. You're not gonna find it in this list, but it may have been just the first one out. Yeah, similar to Tuscan Leather, like I said, but still, it's really well done. Performance kicks on that one also. Top two, probably shouldn't be too much of a surprise. These fragrances are just destroyers if we're talking about performance and compliments, and my wife loves both of these. Capital L loves these scents. Number two, this is a little bit more on the high end as far as the cost goes with Parfums to Marley scents, Carlisle. This one has tonka, apple, patchouli, saffron, and vanilla as some of the notes in the fragrance. And it has a bit of a similarity to Mancera's Red Tobacco. That being said, if you compare this head to head with Red Tobacco, I think Carlisle is better. Red Tobacco in the opening is a bit harsh. There's a whole bunch of stuff going on, just like notes coming and going, and it can be overwhelming the first time you smell it. This one though, much smoother, much more well done. Now you do get that warmth and sweetness from the Tonka. You get a, a brisk apple off the top, and then very quickly, a bunch of patchouli that mixes in underneath it all. But the patchouli never goes too far onto the earthy side of things, the dirty side of things, because it's contrasted by these other sweeter notes like the tonka, the vanilla, and that sweet spice from the saffron. Carlisle lasts forever off my skin. Fantastic in the fall, amazing in the winter. Big, big, big compliment puller. Classy as well. Like I said, even though there is that similarity between this and red tobacco, technically, Carlisle came out first and did it better. Now we're at the number one spot. Should be obvious, Layton. Apple, vanilla, cardamom, lavender, sandalwood, some of the notes here. This is one of the most versatile cool weather scents that I've ever smelled. It is one of my most complimented fragrances ever in terms of how many compliments you get versus how often you've worn the fragrance. It's like we're busting out some scientific mathematical equations for compliments. You see, what you need to do is you need to take the number of times that you've worn the fragrance versus the number of times that you've gone out wearing the fragrance, divide that by the number of compliments that you've got. And then you also need to factor in whether the person giving you a compliment is someone you know or not. If it's somebody that knows you, that compliment's not worth as much. If it's somebody that you don't know, it's worth uh, approximately 2.5 times as much as a compliment from, uh, let's say, a coworker. Now, I made mention earlier in the video that there is a latent exclusive, which I'm sure you already knew, and they took the base of that fragrance essentially and mixed it with Pegasus and you got Pegasus exclusive. So you may wonder, uh, do you think latent exclusive is as good as latent? And I would tell you, no. For me personally, I think that latent is better than latent exclusive. I would always always personally choose this one over exclusive. I've gotten better feedback with the original Layton and I think that overall just the makeup of that scent, it's great how it is. I don't think it needs to be messed with. I never smelled Layton and was like, you know what I wish this had? A little bit of an animalic funk. That would really, really take it to the next level. That would be like somebody smelling Aventus and they would go, you know what we need? An Aventus with some civet. And dude, all I'm trying to say is it's perfect how it is. It is absolutely made to be as appealing as possible to as many people as possible while still retaining a high level of ingredient quality. That's what it does. You don't need to mess with it. Layton is the best that Parfums de Marley has to offer, in my opinion. There are definitely more complex fragrances that Parfums de Marley has. There's definitely more 
uh, out there, more artistic, more challenging fragrances that they have for sure. But for what this was made to do and how well it does it, I think it, it just hits the nail on the head. So Leighton, that's number one. That's the big dog. So there we have it, my personal top five. These are the five that I would reach for right now as of this video, if I were gonna reach for a Parfums de Marley. As you can tell, no summertime since. What I need you to do is leave me a comment and you tell me what your favorite Parfums de Marley fragrances are, assuming that you've smelled any of them, of course. And again, a shout out to Fragrance USA and a link in the description to their website, PDM25 saves you money off their Parfums to Marley selection. All right, that's gonna do it for me. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Thanks for all your support. Stay safe out there and I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys later.